Is he the best player in the league right now that hasn't been an All Star yet? We close to it. Like, he, yeah, like there's yeah. a couple of guys you can name, but I, I think he's definitely one, right? Yeah. Like the guy that just he he's got All Star talent. Um, and I love that he his last couple of years he learned how to be a primary scorer, but he was a really good reserve and then turned into a really good starter on really good teams. He mm-hmm. went to the finals. Let's not forget that mm-hmm. he's got a ton of experience for a young guy. Sure. So I think the way I would use him, and I'm wondering if, if Tibbs might do this too, because I know we're all talking about depth, and a lot of times we talk about, you know, 10-man rotation, two units, right, first unit, second mm-hmm. unit, all that stuff. But I look and I think I've seen Tom Thibodeau now for a couple of years, and, and I've seen what he does, and he did this with R.J. Barrett. He did it with Julius Randle. He takes one starter. They come out early in the first quarter. They come back in the second quarter and start the second quarter with the second unit. Yep. And so you have four four bench guys and one starter who's a primary scorer. And that like it's it's almost to say, okay, now you, you don't have to worry about deferring to Jalen. This is your time to score. And for Barrett, when RJ was playing with Jalen and, and Julius, they gave RJ those minutes and basically said, Okay, RJ, you can cook with the bench. We're gonna let you cook. And you and quickly have good chem, so we'll let you guys go. And he'll do that. My gut is. He played a lot with Cameron Payne in Phoenix. He knows mm-hmm. him well. The feeling is, is like you put Bridges with McBride and Payne, and then you've got obviously Precious and, and Sims, and that that's your bench unit. And Bridges could get his buckets in those minutes. And yeah. you you know how valuable those bench minutes are. I try to tell people all the time, don't don't overlook the value of those bench minutes because the bench's job is to take if it's a deficit, close the gap. If it's a lead, open it up, or at worst, hold the lead, right? You yeah. don't want to be in – when your benches have ne- have minuses in the plus-minus box, it's a bad bench. Yeah, you're in trouble. You want a bench that's either even or, or going to be on the plus side most nights. And a guy like Bridges, you need somebody who's a primary scorer who can cook against other teams' benches who obviously are not going to be as strong when you know most rosters in the league don't have a ton of talent coming off that bench. So what I think is he's going to contribute – Defensively with the starting five and his versatility, but I think offensively you'll see him cook with the second unit. That's what I would do anyway. Yeah. I don't know if Tibbs is doing this, but from watching Tibbs coach, he generally does that kind of a formula, and I think that's maybe what we'll see. Yeah, I, I felt that way even prior to the cat tree that, that they would use – that they could use Mikhail Bridges, stagger the big three, if you will, and have Mikhail yep. Bridges come in in those non-Brunson minutes to really help spur that offense because that was a big challenge for them last year. And so, you know, you potentially, like you said, you have a chemistry between Payne and Bridges. You have McBride out there who's been doing well in the, in the preseason playing off ball. And then hopefully you can, you can kind of jumpstart their offense that way. <laughs> 